Let's look at the MRI here, Dr. Jabor, and highlight what you're looking at and some concerns you may have had when you saw this MRI. Thanks, Travis. Well, what we have here is a beautiful midline sagittal view of the brain, which looks normal, but we need to zone in on the pituitary to really look at the anatomy. When we um, magnify just the pituitary looking from the side, that's front and that's back, we see a normal pituitary uh, <clears throat> encasement, the shape of the pituitary, it's called the cella turcica and the hypothalamus are in a good position. And on the next image, when we look from the front. And for everyone watching right now, you may be looking at this image and thinking to yourselves, oh, that's just a small little part of the brain, but the pituitary dictates the production of so many hormones in the body, including sexual hormones. That's why the focus right now is pituitary gland and what may be going on there. So in this image, there were some things that, yeah. that looked interesting to you. So there, there's an asymmetric shape with this bright signal on this side, not seen on that side, but we do have a midline hypothalamic stalk. You're pointing here with this arrow because there's white over here that you're not seeing on the other yes. side. That's the asymmetry we're talking about. So Dr. Shanning, you're a school based expert where the pituitary gland lives. When you're looking at this, what do you see concerning, not concerning? Fortunately, in this case, uh, in Brandon's case, and I congratulate you, uh, this is a benign lesion. I'll draw it. This is the normal pituitary gland here in yellow. This is the carotid artery here in pink. And there is a hockey stick lesion that you can see just between the two in blue, this hockey stick lesion is a benign overgrowth of the skull, the bone where the pituitary sits. Oh. So it is extrinsic to the pituitary. I want to thank Dr. Jabour and Dr. Shahinian for helping us out. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Dr. Spitz, a couple other things I want to look at, because we mentioned before, Brandon, you lack a sense of smell. Yeah. And this image from the MRI shows potentially why. That's correct. These bright areas right here, there should be the nerves for the sense of smell, and they're gone. It'd be a darker signal there. And the nerves for the sense of smell, when they form, they also bring along with them the nerves that stimulate the pituitary gland to release those key hormones for puberty and sexual development. And since those nerves for the sense of smell are gone, those nerves that control the pituitary are gone, and that's why Brandon has this syndrome. So, Testosterone helps us mature, but it doesn't help us get taller. In fact, it stops the growth of the bones by closing the growth plates. But in Brandon's case, because his testosterone is so very low, these growth plates never closed. And, and everyone, see, look at this right here. You see where the bone is a little bit lighter through here? That is an open growth plate. The bone, it should be like the rest of the bone, that darker white. And, and because you see that growth plate, it means that literally his bones... He never had the signal from the testosterone to close it down. The other thing you can notice a little bit on here and also on a uh, bone density scan that he had is that the bones themselves are weak. Uh, and this is because testosterone is critical in bone strength and bone density. And as a result, Brandon has osteoporosis. This makes him more prone wow. for easily breaking his bones. With testosterone, the bones can strengthen up. Not only does it close the growth plate, but it keeps the bones strong. And that's the silver lining is, Brandon, yeah. there is treatment. Thank you. You can be treated and you can go through your sexual maturation, go through puberty, and get on with a more normal life. Awesome. What you need is that missing testosterone. And fortunately, it's very simple and straightforward to give that to you. Testosterone comes in a variety of uh, applications. It can be injected, there's pellets, and there's topical applications. This one's very easy to use. It's called Axeron, and okay. it's a pump bottle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a squirt in that little cup, okay. and you're gonna rub it on your underarm. You're gonna do it again and rub it on the other. And that's it, wow. once a day, it's that easy. Now I know you live in a different part of the country, <laughs> yeah. so I've made arrangements with a very good friend of mine who's a top level expert in testosterone replacement okay. and a condition like yours, Dr. Ed Kim at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, and he's agreed to take you on and, and transition you and get you going, follow your testosterone levels, make sure that all the doses are right, 
and everything's going to get turned on, okay? <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> ladies, <laughs> watch out, ladies! <laughs> Man, it, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show, and, and I hope the inspiration that you've provided people at home is if you have a medical problem, and Brandon opened up discussing a problem he's dealt with his whole life, and now there's a chance for a cure and for Brandon to live the kind of life you've been waiting to live in. We, we, we look forward to updates, my friend. Thank Get you. Get us posted, okay? It's about time. <laughs> That's good. Thank you.